Good evening, everyone. If you're joining us from Southeast Asia or anywhere in Asia, uh, welcome to the Monday evening call. If you're joining me from the United States, good morning. If you're joining me from Europe, good afternoon. I'm so happy that you're on the call today. We have a very exciting call. We're going to be talking about two new doTERRA essential oils, Copaiba and Siberian fur. And I'm going to get started right away because we've got a lot of information to cover. And I know you can't stay on the call all day, but I want to make sure that you get most of what's going on in this call. So here we go. Let me share my screen. Here we go and shrink myself. Okay. Um, Okay, Copaiba and Siberian fur. New and amazing. What I love about these two oils is that they have chemical profiles that really rival anything else that we've seen in doTERRA so far. Really only close, my second close would be frankincense. And so you're probably all scratching your heads and thinking, really? This is a close second to frankincense? I have to say these two oils based on their chemical profile and their price point really makes sense for any family to incorporate. So as you know, these are the first two oils that doTERRA has actually released for sale since the convention. All of the other oils will be made available after October 1st, but I'm encouraging you now, it's towards the end of the month, there are supplies, please put in your orders. I know that if you're in Asia, you need to put in an NFR order, but it is well worth your while to put in an NFR order to be able to get these two amazing products. So first of all, I wanna say thank you to our Blue Diamond team. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Elena Jordan, and um, I'm so happy that I've been able to be on the call with you almost every week for the last three years. Really kind of shocking now that I think about it. Thank you also to Elizabeth Ho, Hong and Shu Li, Sang Lui, Wen Wei, and Lorinda Walker, our rising blue diamonds, our rising diamonds. And I have to um, uh, give a big shout out to Bean Hu Lim, also known as Nian Fu, who is a wonderful man and super patient because I've had him on the wrong list now for a couple of weeks. And he's never said to me, hey, put me in the right spot. So we highlighted him in red. He is a wonderful leader, very giving, an extremely intelligent man runs another business, um, sharp business person, great integrator, great team leader. Thank you so much for all that you do and congratulations on reaching the rank of platinum and we're looking forward to seeing you walk the carpet next year. Um, thank you also for, to Karen Johnson and Kat, Sri Malati, Denise and Nicole and our rising platinums, Swen B, Joyce Lynn, Sihan, Sandra, Carmen, Nicole, Alan Tay, Heather, David, and Michelle. And finally, our rising golds, Melanie, Sarita, Bryce, Kak Heng, Joyce, Sun Kun, Marie, Zheng Zheng, Agnes, Lydia, Wei, Yoke Mei, Eng Zi, Siu Lin, Ling, Anne, Sylvia, Laura, Lin, or Hasselina, Kathleen, Pui Hoon, Shirley, Joyce Lin, Telia, and Vince C. Thank you to our amazing Blue Diamond team. You are all working so hard and I'm so enthusiastic to see how you've gone back and integrated all the knowledge that you learned during convention, passing the word to your team leaders. I know that two members, I know that many of you were on the live streaming or were, act, were able to catch the convention in the taped version. It is now done as far as I know it's done. We, I didn't get a word yet that it had been extended, but um, uh, a powerful amount of information. And um, as we begin to integrate it, I think we're going to see strong change and growth in our global team. So usually I tell you that the information contained herein is from the book, Essential Oils Healthcare for Today, but today it is not. It is actually taken from um, a lecture given by Dr. David Hill at the International Convention. For those of you who don't know Dr. Hill, he is the founding executive and chief medical officer and chairman of the Scientific Advisory Committee for doTERRA. He, has, um, uh, he is a physician and is well known throughout the world as an expert in essential oils and integrative medicine. Dr. Hill partners with physicians, scientists, and hospitals around the world, defining and establishing the medical integration and use of essential oils in modern 
health practices for individual use. He guides advances in essential oil science through a number of top university and research affiliations, providing more in-depth understanding for essential oils and their use. He is a frequent guest on many radio and television shows and has authored a number of books and other publications. Dr. Hill is a, uh, a wonderful man. I've had the great honor and privilege to meet him several times, to break bread with him and hear him speak in person and one-on-one -on -one. and his dedication and his love, uh, not only of essential oils, but really his fellow human being is just profound. And the same warmth and charisma that you see from the stage is exactly what you get when you see him one-on-one. Um, -on -one. He is an extremely patient and giving man. And um, we're very, very blessed to have him as our medical advisor and um, chief executive officer. So our um, talk today, as I said, is based on a talk that he did. For those those of you who saw him live, I hope you won't come back and say, oh my goodness, that was terrible. Dr. Hill was so much better. So please be patient with me. These are difficult concepts, but I want to try to make them as simple as possible for all of us because you're going to need to explain these two oils to your teams, to your family members, and to your friends. And I want to give you some information that you can honestly use and pass on and duplicate. So here we go. So I wanna start, a for, first of all, with our first oil, but I wanna talk a little bit about the past. So originally we had two fur oils in doTERRA. We had one called white fur, another called Douglas fur, and here's pictures of the oils with the actual plant next to them. They are similar in chemistry, and in general, fur oils are monoterpenes. What I love about um, the fur oils is they can provide depth, and they can provide sort of a, um, a punch of uh, a base note to any sort of blend that we're mixing. For those of you who have known me for a while, you know that one of the times that I was in Asia over the last, say, two years, I actually came with a blend that I was... Um, that I had made myself that was based on, um, had, had some white fur in it, not based on, but had white fur in it. What I love about white fur is that, and Douglas fur for that matter, is they're very grounding and soothing. We like them for the skin, but we also like them for that ability, think of a tree, to kind of fix us in place and make us feel a little bit more stable. Now, um, as I begin to talk to you about uh, uh, fur oils in general, we want to make sure that we're keeping in mind that the chemistry of the oils really is the most important thing. Um, so in when you're using or picking a, a fur oil, you almost can't make a wrong choice. Fur oils are um, uh, terrific blended with other citrus oils or blended with citrus oils and also some of the flower oils. So consider uh, using fur oils. I'm going to talk a lot about how they work and what they can do for you and your family. Okay, so when we compare uh, fur, white fur, let's talk a little bit about white fur. We see that white fur has some unique characteristics. It has additional limonene that has made it very attractive to us in the past. And when we look at a comparison of white fur versus Siber I'm sorry, versus Douglas fur, here we go, we can see that in the yellow, and that's on the right-hand side where it says white fur, that um, white fur was higher in things like boronyl acetate, camphene and limonene than Douglas fir. And that Douglas fir was higher in bepinine, sabinine, and ter terpeno terpenoline than white fir. And all of that is important and higher in much, you can see the, the differences are, are much greater in the purple or in the yellow. We liked white fir because it had those high levels of limonene. However, when we look at um, uh, uh, Douglas fir and white fir, um, we can also see that white fir, because of its limonene content, kind of sets it apart from the other fir oils. So let's talk about now um, the actual new oil, Siberian fir. Abies siberica. So Siberia, Siberian fir actually comes from the twigs and the branches. One of the challenges what we were having with white fur was it, our ability to maintain quality. Um, Dr. Hill says that if he had to choose between white fur and Siberian fur, he would choose Siberian fur 100% of the time, which is really interesting. Siberian fur, as we can see here, is actually higher. Oops. So uh, I guess the question then becomes, do I need both Siberian fur and white fur? Well, actually, the question um, 
can be answered with probably not. And right now, we can no longer actually um, find white fur that meets our criteria for uh, chemical standards and cannot be so it cannot be sourced as productively as we need it to be. So what are we doing? We're actually eliminating white fur and we're only going to have Siberian fur. So let's look at the three main reasons we are loving Siberian fur. Number one, Siberian fur has a more prominent chemistry than white fur. When we look, when we compare Siberian fur with white fur, we see that across the board, Siberian fur has a better profile for the char for characteristics that we're looking at. So when we look at Siberian fur, here's the, on the yellow on the right, Siberian fur far exceeds white fur in boronyl acetate, A-terpenine, camphene, uh, three carine, pine, alpha pinene, and terpinaline. Now, while white fur is higher than Siberian fur in limine, limonene and B-pinene, if we are looking for limonene, frankly, we're better served by trying to find a, um, um, a citrus oil that has a higher limonene content. So if we're thinking about uh, boosting our limonene content, we look for something like a grapefruit or a tangerine or a wild orange that actually have nine, uh, uh, limonene contact in the 90 percentile rather than using white fur. And for that reason alone, Siberian fur makes sense for us. Um, a lot of, the other thing is, a lot of the research we're seeing coming out of uh, doctors and research centers is that are based on an internal model, which is extremely important. So we can see that um, research is demonstrating that Siberian fur can positively affect many body systems, not just the few body systems that we were seeing with white fur. Now, let's take a look at the active com components in Siberian fur. Um, if we looked at how, we look at how Siberian fur can be used, we can use it for relaxation, cardiovascular support, cell support, cleansing, metabolism, respiratory support, tissue support, and immune support. And the reason why we're getting such wonderful effects, as you can see, is the high levels of alpha pinene and caffeine, and, and even the high levels of boronyl acetate. All of those are what are creating this very complex depth of uh, usage and um, therapeutic, uh, uh, therapeutic benefits of Siberian fur. When we look at Siberian fur and we look at these three, com three compounds, we can actually look on the, on the wheel and really Siberian fur fits into it what I'll call a unique category all by itself. The other thing about Siberian fur that makes it uh, unique, it's our third reason to love it, is that it's recommended for topical, aromatic, and internal use, where white fur was really only for topical and aromatic use, which makes this this particularly special oil for us, a fur oil that can be ingested, taken in a capsule. So how would you use Siberian fur? Let's look at the three main ways, aromatic, topical, and internal. So aromatically, you could diffuse it to evoke feelings of relaxation and rest. You could inhale it directly to soothe dry airways. So just place a drop on your, on your hands, rub your hands together, place them gently over your nose and mouth and breathe in. Topically, you could apply to soothe skin irritations. You could apply it to calm overactive tissues and ease discomfort. Now, what do we mean by that? Overactive tissues can be a tissue that perhaps has some sort of skin irritation. Did you get a bug bite? Do you have some sort of a rash or other uh, 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 uticarian um, disruption? Also, if when we think of things like um, eczema, seborrhea, psoriasis, Siberian fur, diluted would be one of my choices. When we talk about using it to inhale to soothe dry airways, um, I know that in Singapore, you very often suffer from the haze, maybe not right now, but that season will be coming, I'm sure. That would be a wonderful time for you to be able to refresh the air. When we think of pine trees cleansing the air, taking in toxin, 
toxins and then re releasing fresh oxygen. We want to think of Siberian fur in the same way. Use your Siberian fur to cleanse your air. And finally, internally, what a wonderful use model. You can use one to three drops in a capsule to support body systems. When we talk about supporting body systems, we're talking about our whole body, our immune system, liver, digestive system. I would be blending it with other oils, perhaps a drop of Siberian fur and a drop of frankincense first thing in the morning to kind of support your whole body to uh, elicit cell renewal. Consider uh, putting Siberian fur into your regular rotation for usage. Okay, let's talk about application. What are the things, some of the blends that I would put together? I would combine with citrus oils for surface cleansing. Many of you um, have, maybe not right now, but in the past have purchased cleansers in the supermarket that contain either a pine smell or a citrus smell. What a wonderful way to have that fresh scent in your house. If you're using just sort of warm water and a little bit of white vinegar, the addition of Siberian fur can help to refresh and also cut that smell of vinegar, which can be a little bit unpleasant when, when it's in high dosage. You can use it in combination with rosemary, eucalyptus, cypress, or lime for, cl for clarifying aroma and respiratory support. So if you are in the um, habit of using eucalyptus, perhaps, to breathe in, if you're having uh, any sort of respiratory discomfort, you can add these add Siberian fur into your rotation. And then finally, blend with tea tree, cedar wood, or the flower oils. And you know, we have some new flower oils, but I'm thinking of things, our old favorites like lavender or helichrysum to help eliminate blemishes and support healthy skin. So for to refresh the skin, to clean your, um, your environment, and also to clean your air and to support your respiratory system. Now let's talk about copaiba. Now copaiba um, is actually a resin. What you see in that spoon there is what the resin looks like. It's a clear resin. It does not solidify or crystallize. It comes out almost like water, but it is uh, tapped from a tree trunk, very much the way maple syrup is used. And maple syrup may not be the most common thing in, um, in Asia, but in the United States here, as fall approaches, maple syrup is a big industry. And we tap our trees now in the, in the fall as the sap begins to run down. And it's a, a wonderful condiment that we use to sweeten foods and a natural sugar. It has to be cooked down. I'm, I'm sure similar to the way copaiba needs to be um, distilled to make it uh, easy for use. So let's talk a little bit, first of all, about the body system that copaiba supports. And this is gonna be, we're gonna dive a little bit deeply into the science because it's important for us to understand what's going on in the body before we can uh, uh, truthfully understand what's going on with copaiba and how it can help us. So here we go. So first of all, what is the endocannabinoid system? Big word, it is part of, it's actually a system that was discovered in the 1990s. And um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what it is and how it works for you. Okay, so the endocannabinoid system was discovered in the early 1990s. And since then, scientists have worked to learn as much as they can about it, publishing thousands of peer-reviewed studies. These studies have shown that the endocannabinoid system helps to regulate everything from mood to immune system function to sleep and more. The endocannabinoid system is made up of receptor sites on cells, enzymes, and endocannabinoids cannabinoid-like compounds that are naturally produced by the human body. The receptor sites include the CB1 and CB2 receptors, which respond differently to different cannabinoids. So interestingly enough, one of the things that Dr. Hill said is right now, we've only discovered the CB1 and CB2 receptor sites, but it is actually very possible that there are additional CB, um, uh, CB receptors, and we have yet to discover them. So this is a fascinating new field, considering we've only just discovered this system in the 1990s. We've got about 20 to 25 years of research, and obviously that's still growing. CB1 receptors are most prevalent in the central nervous system, while CB2 receptors are found mostly on cells in the immune system. 
So now we've got three different types of chemicals, if you will, or uh, compounds that react with the CB1 and CB2 receptors. They are abbreviated THC, CBD, or BCP. And we're going to talk about them in detail in a moment. So THC reacts primarily with CB1 receptors, causing the well-known high feeling. So these are the, the um, CB1 recept THC is found in things like marijuana. Um, this, we are not going to be talking about that today. And actually, if we touch on it, we're going to tell you a little bit about why doTERRA is um, opposed to um, pursuing anything that, that affects the CB1 receptors. CB2, on the other hand, tends to work indirectly on CB2 receptors, while BCP works directly on the CB2 receptors. So interestingly enough, we've got something in the BCP that can work directly on the CB2 receptors, working to support our immune system. We're always looking for things to support our immune system. And I hammer on this all the time, but we have to begin to think of our immune system as something we, re we protect and we cherish. And we do everything that we can to support it because it's important as human beings, we're really being barraged by so many different toxins and things that affect our health. So we want to protect our immune system and boost it and make it as strong as possible. So now let's take a look at THC, CBD, and BCP. Okay, so first of all, this is what I said. Here's the endocannabinoid system. CB1 receptors work on the brain and the central nervous system. And the CB2 receptors are controlling the endocrine system, so all of our hormones and the immune system. Again, supporting our hormones and our immune system. I've said on this call a couple of times, I might not have said it recently, when I first started working with essential oils about 10 years ago, I remember someone saying to me, oh, you have to support your hormones. Or you have to protect your hormones. And at the time I had already, I was married and I had already had my babies. And I remember thinking, why do I have to support my hormones? I already had my children. And I know now that that was kind of a stupid response. And if you have children or you don't have children, it really doesn't matter. Your hormones are used for everything. They re regulate your heart function and your digestion and your respiratory system. We have to protect our hormones. Our endocrine system is critical to how we um, live our lives and how healthy we feel. So yes, protect your hormones at all costs. So when we hear that something is a hormone disruptor, like a chemical or a candle that has fragrance in it, or perhaps a dryer sheet or other things that have false fragrances in them, we want to run or basically get rid of them as soon as possible. Okay, so CBD, THC, and BCP. Let's start on the left with CBD or cannabidiol. Cannabidiol is actually an oil that you may have heard about in the press. It is um, usually a liquid oil that people have been uh, an ingesting for some, what they hoped were health benefits. What we're finding or what doTERRA has found is that um, CBD, which has a lot of promise actually, or, or was believed to have promise, is actually not found in the oil at all. So by testing uh, various samples, doTERRA found that many of the samples that, that were um, advertised as having high levels of CBD actually had levels that were less than 1%, sometimes less than even half of 1%. So they might have uh, elicited a placebo effect, but the fact that the compound is not biologically available in the product is really very troubling. We don't want to waste our money on something that's not available in the product. You may see CBD oil advertised on the internet. As I was doing my research for this presentation, I saw it everywhere and I saw information about why they thought it was great. But if you test the samples, the CBD is really not in there. The other thing we just learned is that CBD reacts um, indirectly for the CB2 receptor sites. So that means we're not getting that one-two punch that we want when we use essential oils. We want something that um, uh, wakes up the body and reacts, um, uh, react, helps the body to react positively. So it does not act directly, as it says here, on the CB receptors. 
Now let's talk about THC, tetrahydrocannabinol. Uh, uh, this is the compound that we find in marijuana. It does interact with the CB1 and CB2 receptors, but it stimulates a psychoactive effect. And that's something that we really want to shy away from in, in doTERRA. The oil containing, oil containing THC is a regulatory and legal challenge. Right now in the United States and in many countries throughout the world, it is illegal and we will not participate. So I want you to make sure, everyone to make sure that um, this is not uh, any oil that has anything to do with medical marijuana or legal marijuana. It is completely separate. But the idea that these three cannabinols are actually being linked is very important and important for you to understand in case you get any questions from the people on your team. Number three, beta-carophylline. Uh, beta so BCP, beta carophylline. Interestingly enough, beta carophylline is actually present, present in high quantities in Copaiba. It has no CB1 interaction, which means it doesn't cause that, um, that uh, elucidative effect that you would find with marijuana, but it has the same benefits as other cannabinoids. It works directly on the CB2, um, receptor sites, so not indirectly, but directly on the CB2 receptor sites, and it has, and there are therapeutic amounts present in the oil when it is distilled, and that's really the key to understanding this. You want to make sure that when the when the pro, the ultimate product that can be tested in research laboratory actually has the compound in it that we know to be therapeutic for our bodies. So CBD, we're just not finding in the oil. THC is creating this elucid, elucidative effect or this high that we don't want to get involved in. And it has some regulatory and legal challenges all over the world. And finally, beta carophylline working on the receptor sites that we want to influence and is present in the final, in the final um, product. Super important. So what are some other essential oils that we already have that have beta carophylline? Black pepper, also oregano. I put that at the top there. Um, Melissa, lang lang, clove, helichrysum, and juniper berry. Black pepper is actually used to help combat um, addictive feelings or behaviors. I know many people have used it uh, successfully, even just in a perfume application, applying to the pulse points, adding it into a diffuser blend, not necessarily even taking it internally, but just the idea of coming in contact with the black pepper, having it on the pulse points can actually block that, um, those desires, those, un, those uh, unproductive desires that one may have when one has an addiction. So let's talk about this particular Copaiba. You do know that Copaiba has been on the market for a couple of years, and I have to say you may hear it called Copaiba or Copaiba, but the, it is Copaiba, Copaiba. Um, that's actually the Spanish or the, the Brazilian spelling, the Brazilian pres, uh, pronunciation. The oil does come from Brazil. And um, there's a short video, I believe, online of someone actually tapping the trees so you can get a, a look at that. Our copaiba, doTERRA's copaiba, is a special and unique blend of four copaiba, copaferia, copaifera species. So now why do we have four species in our model? It's not that we want to um, make sure that we can... Um, uh, not for sustainability, because we are able to, th these are oils that are e relatively readily available, but because we increase potency and diversity by blending four different species. We do that with our frankincense. We blend diff three different species to increase the uh, potency. Um, where we uh, increase potency and diversity, we allow the oil to work in, on many different levels. Each one of these types of copaferia um, can interact with different parts of the body. And this is an, an important and really unusual blend of uh, copaiba. Okay, so let's talk about what are the body systems that can be affected by this, uh, 
Notice that Dr. Hill has put liver and antioxidant support number one. Your liver is the filter for your entire body. Everything that we eat and drink, everything that we come in contact with, eventually gets filtered somehow through the liver. We put an enormous amount of stress on our liver um, through our lifestyle, through the things that we experience. Uh, whether it's smoking or drinking or foods that we eat, the stress that we're under, the liver is under constant strain. We need to be able to support it. Our cardiovascular health. Also, if your cardiovascular system is not strong, you want to make sure that it becomes strong and that we're strengthening. We can sustain proper immune response, making sure we have a proper, um, as I said before, immune system that's working to support us. Uh, Copaiba works as digestive support, probably applying a drop or two right over the, um, over the stomach or blending it with other oils. And I'm going to give you a couple of blends that you can use in about a moment. It also helps to support proper neurological function probably because it works on the CB2 receptors, which um, create a, um, a, su a, a support or a framework, if you will, for total body support. And finally, proper respiratory function. Um, what we see is that um, this, this blend of four Copaferia oils far exceeds anything else that's available on the marketplace today. So let's talk about internal application. You want to take it in the morning and in the evening for whole body or cellular support. Use two drops in a capsule, um, again, morning and evening. Blend with frankincense for increased cellular, cellular support. So as I mentioned before, you can use Sib Siberian fur internally. You might want to take three drops, one of frankincense, one of copaiba, and one of Siberian fur each morning for cellular support. Add two drops mixed with citrus in water. And we don't take it in water because oils, necessarily because oils mix with water, they do not. But we, um, if we're able to take it, uh, um, by adding it to water, it gives us access to the mucous membranes of the mouth. We can take one or two drops under the tongue each morning for the same reason. And finally, we can blend it with peppermint for digestive support at mealtime. Really a very interesting oil and very um, diverse and allows us to do a lot of things that maybe we can't do with other oils. I like the idea of blending copaiba with frankincense. I know that many of you already take frankincense for different reasons. I'm encouraging you to purchase copaiba and then add it into your daily regimen. It's also an oil, if you did not get a um, convention kit, you haven't had a chance to meet up with someone who did get a convention kit and has uh, allowed you to try the oils, it's a very mild oil. It does not have a strong smell or taste. I was actually shocked when I first smelled it how mild it was. And then when I put it under my tongue, and I have tried it um, several different times in different ways, I haven't tried diffusing it yet, except perhaps on my hands as a, just a, a quick uh, natural diffuser, but I have had it under my tongue. I've applied it to my skin. I had um, a small itchy uh, patch on, the, on one of my ankles. I had been outside and there were a lot of bug bite, bugs out there, mosquitoes. It's the end of the summer here. I applied it and I immediately felt comfort from the copaiba, but not a very strong smell, folks. It's also very, um, it's a very thin liquid, so it pours quickly out of the bottle. It also has a very, um, not, just, not necessarily distinct smell, but very soft and subtle smell. And I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised with the taste as well. Let's talk now about topical application. You want to apply it directly over the affected area, diluted in fractionated coconut oil. You can com combine it with the new blue tansy for soothing relief to skin irritations and minimizing blemishes. And you can blend with your facial moisturizer and cedarwood to, pour to support the ECM or extracellular matrix. Now, I did try it last night with. Um, uh, actually the rose roll on. I'm trying to, to target some wrinkly areas that are really bothering me. And I'll let you know how I begin to see if I see some effects. I have to say with the rose oil, I saw an immediate plumping effect of some of my um, more dry areas of my face. I don't know if that's temporary or permanent or um, what type of effect, but I'll begin to report back to you on what the long-term effects for me have been. 
We want to uh, look specifically at the normal, what a, at a normal controlled inflammatory response that copaiba can bring to us. So we're looking at immune support, support for normal controlled inflammatory response, super important. If we have inflammation of the body, that's when we tend to get sick. And finally, reduction of tissues and neurological excitation. So sometimes when we have pain, when we talk about neurological excitation, uh, a neuron can continue to fire and cause us discomfort. What we want to do is break that cycle of the neuron firing and have the neuron calm down. Because sometimes when we have pain, we may have had an old injury, we continue to have um, neurological effects. We think of things like shingles. For those of you who have ever experienced that virus, we know that there are sometimes long-term effects even after the shingles have gone away with some neurological firing and some, some pain and discomfort after the virus has cleared itself because the body continues to fire and the neurons continue to fire along the pain pathways. Copaiba can help to reduce that firing. Um, and then finally, our aromatic application. Breathe in the aroma periodically throughout the day to calm and soothe emotions and neurological activity. Combine with citrus to elevate the mood. And finally, combine with Siberian fur, as I discussed, or a floral oil to create relaxation. Now, I have to say, interestingly enough, now that, now that I reread this, when I applied the copaiba and the rose oil to my face, I was applying it for wrinkles, but I have to say I got into bed and I felt so relaxed. Sometimes I actually listen to music before I fall asleep. I was a little bit wound up because I, I must say, I'm going to admit now fully that I stayed up a little bit late last night preparing this presentation. I wanted to do a good job. I also felt like there was a lot of complicated information and I wanted to be able to simplify it as much as possible. The reason I only did two oils was because I felt that there was so much information they didn't want to go further and make it very complicated. As the weeks go on, we are going to be discussing all of the new oils, the floral oils, blue tansy, and other products that were released at convention. But for today, at least, we're talking about copaiba and Siberian fur. And I believe that's my last slide. Yes, indeed it is. I see there's some people in the chat group. I want to open it up um, for, uh, let me actually pause the share. And I want to go to the... Um, Oops. I want to go to the chat and see what everybody's asking. Mm, where's the chat? Here we go. Okay. Uh, use white fur for plain blends. Do I need to change the proportions when using Siberian fur? No, that's actually a terrific question. You should uh, replace the Siberian fur one for one with the fur blend. Excellent question. And certainly if you're using it in a diffuser blend, for those of you who have my old uh, citrus forest blend that I had handed out about two years ago, you can continue, you can replace white fur with citrus fur, uh, Siberian fur, sorry. There's something chemical burning this evening. Now in Singapore, many area smells. Interesting. Okay. What is ECM? I mentioned before, ECM is the extra cellular matrix, the extracellular matrix. And that's basically the web of cells that lives between the skin that supports our skin and keeps it fresh and young looking and doesn't make us all kind of sag and fall down all at once. So the extracellular matrix. And then can we use DD, DDR prime with copaiba? Absolutely. You can apply it to the skin. You could take the capsules of DDR prime and take some D and copaiba um, in addition. What is the effect? efficacy of Siberian fur compared to play, ply for pain blends. Um, I think this may be a misprint. Um, Cindy Leong, if you don't mind, could you type that again for me? I think it's, it's a question I don't, I don't know if I can answer. Um, in pain blends, I would absolutely use Siberian fur wherever you're using a, uh, a fur. Now, will we begin to, will doTERRA begin to incorporate Siberian fur into either um, deep blue or deep blue rub? I can't say. I guess we'll find out in the next uh, few weeks as we go ahead. Um, so for those of you, I'm going to do a quick show of hands. How many of you have had a chance to smell Siberian fur? How many of you have this is, oh, it's a ginger variation. I see. Okay. Um, I would blend Siberian fur with ginger. Ginger has different compounds than the fur oils, 
Both are very effective. I think together they could be even more, more powerful. That's a great question, Cindy. Um, how many of you had a chance to try the Siberian fur? Smell the Siberian fur. One, two, a couple of you, three. Oh, not a lot yet. Okay. Um, I will tell you if you were a lover of white fur, if you really liked white fur, I think you will love Siberian fur. It's a little bit more powerful in my, my opinion. So less than a quarter of you have smelled it. Okay, so I see some leaders on the team. Um, people like uh, um, Elizabeth Ho and other people that I know work at convention, Marie Durso. If you were at convention, Michelle Young, I know you were at convention. If you were at convention and you, um, uh, had a, you have a bottle of si Siberian fur, how do you use it judiciously? Someone said to me the other day, I have a bottle of Siberian fur, but I, can't, I only have one and I'm not gonna have another one for another couple of weeks. How can I possibly, um, how can I possibly pass this out? Use a smell stick. So how do we use a smell stick? Take a small piece of paper, usually something that's a little bit more absorbent, like a blotter paper, put a single drop on that piece of paper and then pass it around the room. Now, it's not enough for everyone to get an actual application, but they can definitely get a sense of what it smells like and begin to feel what the aroma is like, whether it's powerful, what category that it comes in. Um, the last thing is um, Copaiba. So um, if you, have you used Copaiba before? So I'm going to put all hands down. Hold on. Here we go. Lower hands. Um, if you've used Copaiba before, um, you know that it had some amazing properties. What I think is going to be different about this particular Copaiba is its ability to work in a more broad way because it is a blend of four different Copaibas. So um, how many of you have used Copaiba either now or in the past? Give me a hands up. Okay. Not a lot. Give me a few more. Okay. Still not too many. So it really is a new oil for many of you. Okay. That's, I think that's actually a great thing. When we think about um, essential oils, we, think about, we want to think about challenging our physiology challenging ourselves really to use something that's new and different and really um, uh, begin to put new essential oils into the rotation. I've talked to you many, many times about not overusing essential oils, using too many at a certain time. The other idea that we want to really uh, think about is changing up the oils that we use. It's important for us um, to use different oils. So when you see an oil that has positive chemistry like this, you want to incorporate it into your rotation. Okay. Um, and now I'm actually going back to the chat one more time because I see a couple of new ones. Um, um, I have been using a smell stick with the new oils when I share them. Okay, terrific. A smell stick is great. And my brother diagnosed with autoimmune disease in the liver. What's the best protocol using Copaiba? As I mentioned before, most of the research is showing internal usage, internal usage. So I would consider, especially for an autoimmune disease, using Copaiba internally, starting with a drop or two in a capsule or just under the tongue on a daily basis. Siberian fur and water tastes surprisingly good and refreshing. Thank you, Elizabeth. And then finally, just use both for my sprained ankle. Amazing pain properties. I actually heard that from someone who, uh, who attended the convention. They were saying that um, they had um, used, um, I guess it was Copaiba, uh, the first night that they had received it and slept really soundly. Christine Chu asks, what countries are they from? Uh, Copaiba is from Brazil and Siberian fur, I have to look up. I'm actually not sure where it's from. Um, but I um, am very enthusiastic that, that both of these oils are sustainably produced and I'll post where, um, uh, where Siberian fur is on the, um, on the chat group. So I'm gonna leave you for now. We've had a wonderful talk. Thank you so much for being uh, with me today. Hold on one second, let me go back. Oops. Oh, and how many times daily? Once a day. Dr. Hill is saying once or twice a day, two, one to two drops. 
um, in the morning and again in the afternoon. If you don't have uh, uh, empty capsules, you can use that right in your mouth or in a small amount of water. You can also blend it with citrus oil. Frankly, I'm putting, I use frankincense and grapefruit under my tongue every morning. I had been a very um, uh, heavy coffee drinker. I know it's not that good for me, but I love my coffee. And I find that sort of little bitter aftertaste is actually cutting my craving for coffee. I'm down to about a half a cup of day, which is really a good thing. A little bit is okay, but we really don't want to, um, uh, um, we don't want to use a lot of it, take a lot of coffee on a regular basis. So, um, I will be back again next week with you. We will be talking about the monthly specials, the October monthly specials. I want to thank everyone for having been on the call. Our two winners today are Jiyun Ho and Cynthia Kuznati. Jiyun Ho and Cynthia Kuznati, you are the winner of a black pepper oil that also contains the um, a beta caraophylline, which is great for the CB2 receptor sites. Congratulations. And thank you for everyone uh, having been on the call. I will see you again next week. Bye-bye now.